There's just over two weeks left in the transfer window this summer and Manchester United still have got quite a lot to do. What's happening with our move for Harry Maguire? What about Bruno Fernandes and Sean Longstaff, two central midfield signings that Solskjaer has been pursuing this summer? And what about replacing Romelu Lukaku, who looks like he's going to be joining Inter Milan? What I'm going to do in this video is give you all the latest updates on all of these transfer situations, which could total over £200 million for Manchester United if everything does go through. Now, before I do begin, if you are new to United People's TV, make sure you subscribe and get involved. Hit the notifications bell and join the community. For all of you guys who have joined up to the Fantasy Premier League, league so far there's over 500 have joined. There's a link in the community tab on the United People's TV YouTube page. So make sure you go over there, get involved. There'll be prizes for the winners. But let's get straight into this transfer video. So where else to start really than Harry Maguire, the centre-back that all United fans felt that we were going to sign this summer. Nothing really has changed too much in the last two weeks. It was two weeks ago that a £70 million bid was rejected. And then last Sunday, extra reports came out that an £80 million bid had gone in. And then further reports that week suggested that Maguire was going to have a medical in Manchester. Now, unless this is the world's longest medical, I don't think Maguire's been having his medical at all. So what's really going on? I'll be honest, there's not really any major updates for Maguire at the moment. You've got the likes of Miguel Delaney from The Independent. You've got Dean Jones from The Bleacher Report. They're both saying that a deal is done or imminent. But we're still waiting for confirmation on that. Multiple reports suggest that Maguire has asked to join United or City if the bid comes in that Leicester want. But he's not going to force a move. So what's holding this deal up? I think we all know what it is. It's the price. Now, United going with a £70 million bid, not enough. They don't want to pay the 90 that Leicester want. The middle ground's 80. And that's what the reports last week suggested United had bid. But at this point, there's no confirmation of that. And with just over two weeks left in the transfer window, time really is starting to run out for United. For two reasons. First of all, because we want to sign Maguire. So that's got to go through quickly. And that's because if Leicester want a replacement... They need the money in so they can go and sign their replacement. And secondly, if United's pursuit of Maguire does ultimately fail for one reason or another, we need to look elsewhere because we need a centre-back signing this summer. So if that's not going to be Maguire, who is that going to be? And if we're not going to pay £80 million or £90 million for Maguire, we're not going to pay that for Koulibaly. We probably won't pay that for Skriniar, although nobody knows where he is after what happened in the Inter Milan game. Mason Greenwood kind of ruined him. But United need to move fast with Maguire. We're just over two weeks left. And just over two weeks since that 70 mil bid was rejected, not much movement is happening. And it is a bit concerning. But I suppose if the Wan-Bissaka deal has taught us anything, it's that maybe we shouldn't be overly concerned that United are doing the right things behind the scenes. But the last six years have told me I have every right to be worried about United in the transfer window. Now, moving on to midfield and a certain Bruno Fernandes. And I'll be honest, I'm getting a little bit bored of what's going on with this situation. Fernandes to United has been imminent for a month now, yet there's still no concrete movement. The British press all piped up and said that United were interested in him, agreeing with the Portuguese press. But since then, the move's gone very, very quiet. Over in Portugal, the likes of Ojogo, Ebola, the two main Portuguese sports newspapers, they're all suggesting that United are offering 55 million, but Sporting want 15 more. It's the same stories that we saw a month ago. And in the last month, there really hasn't been too much in terms of development for Bruno Fernandes to United. As I said, the British press got involved and sort of corroborated the stories that were coming out of Portugal. But since then, it's been just rumours, conjecture and slow, slow movement with Bruno Fernandes to United, which makes you think, do United really want him? Are United simply doing this because we don't want to pay the amount that Sporting Lisbon want? Or was Bruno Fernandes always considered by Solskjaer and United a potential replacement for Pogba? And maybe United have decided and are confident that Pogba's not leaving, so we don't need Bruno Fernandes. Now, I disagree with that completely. Because I think even if Pogba stays, which I feel he is going to stay this summer, maybe leave next summer, but that's a whole different video and a conversation. I think United still need attacking midfield reinforcement. Juan Mata is not good enough in that position anymore in this fast-paced build-up. And it's too much reliance on Pogba to have a good game for United to play well. 
that's why we need someone like Bruno Fernandes to come in and give us an alternative to Pogba. Maybe play alongside Pogba with just one defensive midfielder. But regardless of what happened with Paul Pogba this summer, I thought we needed central attacking midfield reinforcement and central midfield reinforcement. But we'll get onto that later on with Sean Longstaff. Yet, nothing really has changed with Bruno Fernandes. Not in the last week or so, that's for sure. But do you think that United's pursuit of Fernandes was as a Pogba replacement? Or do you think this is all going on alongside each other? Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But not much movement again. Same with Harry Maguire. The same can be said for Bruno Fernandes. But what about Longstaff? Again, the trail has gone a bit cold with Longstaff to United. Ever since reports came out that Newcastle wanted more than United paid Palace for Wan-Bissaka. Longstaff himself has said that he's flattered by the interest and that uh, clearly he would like the move. Away from a Newcastle team with Mark Asher, the owner, that's just got rid of one of the best managers that they're ever going to have. And you've just seen Benitez signing Rondon in China. Anyway, Newcastle's a mess. And Longstaff would understandably want to leave that and join United because we are an exciting team. We're making good signings this summer. But again, there's no real concrete movement on this. Everything seems to have stagnated and stalled with Fernandes and with Longstaff. And United need central midfield reinforcements this summer. Regardless of what happened with Pogba, we needed a new defensive midfielder. We needed probably a new attacking midfielder as well. And all of this, Longstaff is, you know, as good a prospect as he could be. He's going to be like Dan James, an unknown entity who could come in and make a difference this season, but is not guaranteed to improve our starting eleven, like Wan Bissaka is. And that's what United need in midfield, certainly in defensive midfield, where Nemanja Matic for me isn't good enough to be starting it every week for United. And I don't really feel we've got any other alternatives. I think if Fred plays, he'll play a little bit more further up as a central midfield alongside Pogba rather than sitting at the bottom of a midfield three. But there's been no movement for defensive midfielders. Longstaff's gone very, very quiet. Is that over the price? Probably because Newcastle clearly, with Mike Ashley as their owner, want too much money and are greedy. And United are not willing to pay that much. But there's some concerns I think United fans are fair to have now that with only just over two weeks left, at what point are we going to pull our finger out and just say, ah, oh, fuck it, pay a bit more and get the players? Because there's a possibility that we're going to be left massively short in midfield if that doesn't happen. Whether that's with Longstaff, Fernandes or a different midfield signing altogether, United have to decide whether we want to have the cash in the bank or players in the squad. We all know what the Glazers would want, but what is Solskjaer going to get? That might be something different. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, the interesting transfer that's developed over the last, I suppose, 48 hours is who Solskjaer could be lining up as a potential replacement for Romelu Lukaku. And that is a certain Nicolas Pepe from Lille. Now, I know a lot of you are big, big fans of Pepe. And with 40 appearances, 23 goals and 11 assists for Lille last season in the French top league, you can understand why people are excited about him as a potential signing. Now, is he a direct replacement for Lukaku? No, he's a right winger, out and out right winger. But as we've seen in, with United in this preseason, we're not playing with a proper number nine, really. Rashford, Greenwood, Lingard, Martial, James. We've got a very dynamic set of front players that are switching wings, switching positions all the time. So someone like Pepe could come in and play that role perfectly. Now, he would cost in the region of 70 million. That's what's being reported by Duncan Castles from the Times. He's saying that United are going after Pepe and that Solskjaer is lining him up. Now, that's an exciting prospect. I mean, what would that mean maybe, though, for Jadon Sancho next summer? Would signing Pepe this summer stop United from getting Sancho next summer? Or would you rather wait, don't get Pepe, and get Sancho? Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But for me... Lukaku's leaving, being left out of the squad on the whole preseason tour. He's injured. He's not fucking injured. Come on, guys. Inter want him. Conte wants him. United want to sell him. Uh, offers have already gone in. Again, it's all about the price. But the price will be met. Lukaku will leave. And if Pepe signs as his replacement, then United will have a hell of a set of exciting attacking players going into next season, won't they? So we're all waiting on an announcement for Maguire. 
Will United be signing him this week? We said that last week, but surely there has to be movement this week because time is running out. Only just over two weeks left for United to complete multiple signings before the Premier League transfer window closes. And Maguire has to be considered the most important one of all of those. What about midfield? Fernandez, Longstaff. What about defensive midfielder? I don't know what United are doing because I don't feel we've been aggressive enough as far as I'm concerned, in terms of central midfield signings. I think the signing of Fernandes would be fantastic, and the signing of Longstaff could prove to be fantastic, but I still feel that would leave us short in midfield. I've, we need an Ndombele type signing, an immediate top class midfielder who can bring power back into our midfield, which has been limp in that position for far too long. And what about Nicolas Pepe as a potential replacement for Romelu Lukaku? Would you be excited by that? And would you be excited if United got those deals over the line. 200 million plus could be spent on Pepe, Maguire, Fernandes and Longstaff. Or will anything be spent at all? And United, do we already have our signings this summer? Let me know what you expect to happen in the next just over two weeks prior to the window closing. Let me know what you think in the comments below as always. If you are new to United People's TV, make sure you subscribe as well. But until next time, take it easy.